break. So my name is uh, Marta Tufel. I'm the head of policy at Gavi. Um, so if we can move on to the next slide, I'm going to give you a, a brief update of um, Gavi's investment in cholera uh, and our linkages to the 5.0 strategies. And then I'll hand over to my colleagues who will talk about uh, some of the next steps. Um, so over to the next slide, please. Um, so Gavi has been and continues to be committed to containing cholera. And since 2014, we have been supporting the global oral cholera vaccine stockpile as part of our vaccines investment strategy. And to date, the objectives of the investment have been to break the current cycle of low demand, low supply of oral cholera vaccine, to reduce outbreaks in Gavi supported countries, and to strengthen the evidence base for periodic preemptive campaigns. Um, but in November 2018, in response to the increased demand that we had been seeing, the Gavi board extended its support for the stockpile and agreed to expand support for the oral cholera vaccine program to include planned preventive immunization. And this decision took part uh, of as part of Gavi's vaccine investment strategy, which is um, what you see here in the slide. And this is an evidence-based and consultative process um, whereby every five years, Gavi takes stock of the immunization landscape with a view to identify and evaluate new opportunities for investment. Um, so, so this uh, process, which is consultative, which is transparent uh, and based on robust methodology, allows Gavi's board to understand what are the various options, what are the trade-offs, what are the opportunities for synergy, um, and it also gives uh, partners countries, manufacturers, key information and visibility for planning. Um, so Gavi identifies and reviews the latest evidence for each potential candidate investment along a set of criteria, um, which can include uh, health and economic impact, uh, value for money and equity amongst, um, amongst others. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, it is, it is highly consultative. Um, it, it is uh, um, done with partners and external stakeholders, um, and it is um, uh, essential that we have these consultations to help develop the recommendations. Um, so the last uh, vaccine investment strategy took place in, in 2018, um, and uh, this is where an expanded investment into cholera and other candidates under consideration were reviewed and they were ranked according to specific criteria. And here you can see how uh, the cholera vaccine as a, as a preventive uh, candidate scored it, uh, as an intervention. So it scored as having medium health impact, um, but it was uh, uh, considered to be able to make an important contribution to equity, to social protection and global health security. Um, and it was uh, also noted uh, that uh, the, the high risk of large scale social, political and economic consequences that would result from outbreaks, um, as well as the underestimation of burden, uh, were important aspects to consider. Um, and so in that context, that recommendation was made for investment in planned preventive vaccination um, as a more comprehensive immunization and disease control strategy. Um, and that you know, it would supplement WASH scale up, uh, it would include a learning agenda as well so that would allow us to understand um, the feasibility and implementation of the vaccine in high risk areas. Um, and in addition, it emphasized uh, the important continued market shaping role for Gavi um, so that we can ensure that supply can meet that increasing demand, uh, building on gains that we have made in the past through the initial stockpile investment. Um, next slide, please. Um, so here I show how uh, OCV fits within the broader portfolio of Gavi supported vaccines and investments that were uh, uh, agreed for support back in 2018. Um, firstly, as identified um, during the investment case building process, OCV scores highly in terms of its contribution towards equity um, through its role in reducing the negative socioeconomic and political consequences of outbreaks um, and uh, that it's possible um, to deliver as a community based intervention. Um, it was also noted that OCV should be part of a comprehensive disease control strategy, and it's important to come um, with complementary support in uh, water, uh, sanitation, hygiene, and uh, in future support for OCV should really uh, place a strong emphasis in integration with WASH 
um, and a shift towards a life course approach, um, which is a common theme across a number of Gavi vaccines pro programs. Um, and this would help uh, further establish immunization as a critical platform, platform for primary healthcare um, and potentially help us achieve synergies across different components of health service service delivery. So in this way, OCV ties very well with the sustainable development goal objectives of leaving no child behind uh, and using primary healthcare as a way to achieve universal health coverage. So uh, finally, together with the other vaccines that were considered under the vaccine investment strategy in 2018, OCV contributes to a broader global health uh, agenda and disease control initiatives, um, some of which we've noted here at the bottom. So I'll hand over to my colleague, uh, Samia, to talk about uh, some of the other aspects. Thank you. Thanks, Marta. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, hello, I'm Samia Mandal, and I work in the vaccine forecasting team at Gavi, and I'll talk about the long-term forecasting around cholera um, in my section. Uh, so, as a bit of a background, um, the long-term forecasting, um, which we also call strategic demand scenarios, is, is usually done uh, at Gavi for various um, uh, at Gavi for various uh, antigens, um, and these are usually a long um, try to model scenarios for you know ten to fifteen years. Uh, these forecasts are used um, to inform various um, strategic roadmaps, you know, yeah, tender uh, strategies. They're even the basis of communication with partners and suppliers. Uh, the long-term forecasts are updated once in a few years when we anticipate there's adequate information that we think might influence, you know, or change this, this expectation of the demand. Uh, just a little background with regards to OCV. So the last time we did a long-term forecast in OCV was late in 2017. And this was one of, uh, this was used to inform the VIS decision at that point of time. Uh, overall, uh, which which concluded with the recommendation for preventive vaccination for the OCV program, um, and then the next update since since that that update was um, has been uh, a while ago. The next update is planned for the first half of next year, uh, and the process will typically include consultations with with partners, most of most most of whom are probably at this meeting. Um, and, and an input on, on the assumptions, a review of, of those assumptions and then eventually finalizing. Um, and ideally, we hope that this forecast will then help inform the upcoming, uh, any upcoming roadmap or tender strategies uh, for, for the next year. Um, and, and yeah, that's it from my end. Next slide, please. Thanks, Samia. Um, so as Marta described previously, Gavi's vaccine investment strategy really paves the way for long-term investment in a strengthened and expanded preventive use OCV program uh, that we've been talking a lot about over the last day or two. Um, so while the operationalization of new VIS vaccine um, investments has primarily been on pause due to COVID-19, I'm pleased to share that we have the go-ahead to begin the design process. Um, we're moving ahead with that over the course of the next year for the preventive OCV program within Gavi's portfolio. Um, our goal is really to build on the existing successful program to broaden the use and the impact of preventive cholera vaccination. So we're in very much the early stage, but I want to share with you a little bit about um, the thinking that's going into what this process will look like. Um, so what we have for the program's guiding principles and the goals, which you'll see on the next slide, were developed based on what we've heard from many of you as central to the OCV program. Um, of course, we have health impact as a top priority. And this means developing a process and support mechanism that ensures countries have what they need to have the greatest health impact with the funding and the tools provided. Um, the second is coordination for the OCV program to continue to be successful as we build a larger preventive component. We'll need to have very close coordination at the country and global levels. Um, this will need to include engagement, as we've been talking this week about um, with disease control divisions, EPI programs, and teams focused on broader uh, disease control measures, such as WASH and health system strengthening, and at the global level in particular on guidance to countries and vaccine allocation. 
Um, third is equity, which Marta also touched on, and this draws a focus on ensuring that we use the resources we have to reach those most in need and at the right time. Um, and while we do anticipate the global availability of OCV to increase, as we've just heard, we'll continue to need to balance the allocation of vaccine to ensure that we're responding to urgent needs while doing our best to anticipate and uh, prevent the next outbreaks as well. Um, so in this program redesign process, we have an opportunity to strengthen preventive campaign planning and implementation. We hope to use this opportunity to create a more interactive, holistic review that ensures campaigns are planned in the most impactful way possible, drawing on local and global expertise and from best practices and implementation. Um, this is especially important in the time of COVID, where we need to be quite innovative, as, as we've also been talking about. Um, we also hope that the increased focus on prevention planning will improve the predictability of campaigns over a longer time horizon, um, thereby providing much needed stability to the market in terms of demand, encouraging existing manufacturers to increase production and new manufacturers to join the market. Uh, we also see opportunities to implement preventive OCV activities in a more integrated way with WASH and EPI programs, as some countries are already starting to do. This could allow us to draw on the strengths of EPI teams to complement the work of the disease control divisions and vice versa leverage the campaigns to identify and vaccinate children and, and adults who may have missed other vaccines. Um, Finally, most importantly, we see this investment as an opportunity to focus on prevention aligned with the impressive long-term plans we've been hearing about yesterday and in doing so significantly reduce the impact cholera has on people's lives around the world. So, of course, we envision this body to continue to play the major role in guiding cholera control activities globally. Um, the strength with GTFCC really lies with its members, all of you, and your engagement in supporting countries to design and implement cholera control programs. Um, we envision that routing the OCV application through the Gavi mechanism will strengthen the application and monitoring systems and also provide an opportunity for countries to access uh, funding for OCV activities beyond just the operational cost. Um, for example, tapping into health systems and other grant mechanisms to strengthen cholera related activities. Um, so for those who are interested, and we hope there are a few, there will be a call for new members to join the expert pool of the Independent Review Committee. Um, and those among the pool will be called upon uh, to review the OCV applications uh, when that program is launched in the future. In terms of timeline, we expect the design phase to take the larger part of the next year. Uh, we're looking towards a possible transition to the new process um, toward the end of the year or into 2023, but we're sensitive to global priorities um, as they emerge around COVID and we may need to make adjustments to that. Um, so just to re-emphasize that the design of this program will be done through an extensive consultative process over the coming year um, to ensure that it meets the needs of the country teams and of reviewers and we're confident that together we can continue to build a strong OCV program and look forward to your engagement. I'm happy to answer some questions now and also discuss afterwards. Thank you.